around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. People today go more, take their pleasures with them. This is the lively life, the life for Pepsi-Cola. Light, bracing, clean-tasting Pepsi. So think young. Say, Pepsi, please. Take Pepsi wherever you go. So go ahead and fix your drink. And let you drink, young as you think. Yes, get the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi for those who think young. Come to town, how are you, Grant? I'm fine, Sam, just fine. First drinks on the house, what have you had? Well, I was going to have a beer. <laughs> One whiskey coming up. <laughs> Did Miss Kitty around today, Sam? Uh, yeah, she's upstairs. She ought to be coming down soon. How's Matt been? Oh, it's fine, fine. <laughs> you uh, going to be in town long, Grant? Just till after the trial. Huh? Oh, yeah, I plumb forgot. You and the marshal are testifying against the Cy Welsh, ain't you? That we are. Well, go ahead. Make yourself at home. Thanks. Hey, Sam. Huh? Who's the new girl at the end of the bar? Oh, her? That's May Talmy. Some looker, huh? Getting better looking every time I come in here. <laughs> oh, she didn't waste any time spotting you either. I'll see you, Grant. Thanks, Sam. Hello. Hello. That's a big bottle you've got. Yeah. Want to help me with it? I hate to see a man drink alone. Sam, glad? Thank you. I may tell me you're Grant Lucas, aren't you? Now, how'd you know that? Heard Sam say it. I've seen you come in. Cheers. Cheers. You know, I uh, like the way you smile, Grant. There's other things I'd rather be admired for, man. We could talk about it at dinner. Dinner? Didn't you ever take a lady to dinner? I did once. Was it that much of a hardship? It was all right. Till her husband walked in and started pot shooting at her. <laughs> that wasn't so darn funny, I tell you. <laughs> well, don't worry about me. I ain't married. Good. I got a room at the Grand Hotel. I thought the mice had taken over that place. Yeah, that's why I like it. Real quiet. Do you mind uh, eating late? No, I guess not. Pick me up about ten tonight. I might even give you a drink. All right. I'm on the ground floor. Fifth window to the right of the entrance. Fifth window? Mm, just wrap on it. I'll come out. You don't want me seen in the lobby, is that it? People gossip about a lone woman. All right, May. Uh-oh. Don't look, but the marshal just came in and he saw you. You ain't in trouble. Not hardly. He's a friend of mine. Oh, well, then I'll leave you. Don't uh, get too drunk now. Don't you worry. I'll be there at ten. I'll be waiting. Ah, uh, Grant Lucas, how are you? Fine, Matt. How are you? Oh, good. Uh, you're in town early. The trial's four days off. Yeah, it's a good excuse to get away from my camp of mine, Matt. I just turned the horses loose and rode in. I'm glad you did. But you stay out of trouble now, yeah? All I done was buy the gal a drink. So far. <laughs> yeah, it sure takes one old thief to catch another, don't it? <laughs> Hello, Grant. Matt. Hello, Kitty. What are you doing in town, Grant? I come in for Cy Welch's trial. Oh, that's right. 
You two are witnesses against them, aren't you? Yeah, for once, duty's going to be a pleasure, Kitty. Well, I've never liked Cy Welch. I hope they hang him. It's not a hanging charge. Well, he killed old Charlie Updike. He didn't kill him. He just robbed him of his stock and his land. Well, old Charlie died. It was a natural death. Grant and I were right there. He sure was. That's when he told us how Cy forced him into siding over his ranch. How come Cy Welch hadn't been in jail all this time? Well, the judge let him out on bail, Kitty. Well, then why hasn't he run for it? He'll get a prison for him about this morning. I think he'll go to prison all right, but why he hasn't run, I don't know. Maybe he thinks the judge will find him innocent. Yeah, but it's an open and shut case against him once the judge hears from Grant and me. Well, I'd sure think so. Then Cy must have an ace of some kind up his sleeve. Well, we'll soon find out. on time. Well, I ain't one to keep a lady waiting. Anybody see you? No, nobody. Good. Hey, you're not dressed to go to dinner. You ain't ready yet. You're wrong about that. I'm ready. I'm always ready. Uh, would you stand back, please? Thank you. <laughs> what happened here, May? Oh, Marshal. Who killed Grant Lucas? I did. I shot him. But why? What for? I didn't know it was him. I didn't know who it was. Now, what do you mean? Look at that window, Marshal. That busted window. You're saying that Grant did that? He didn't get that way by itself. You mean he tried to break in here? Yes. I suppose you told me the whole story, then. Sure I will. I I keep that gun because of this, Marshal. The brooch? Yes. Those are diamonds. It's an heirloom from my mother. Worth a lot of money, but I, I've never parted with it. Well, what's this got to do with Grant Lucas? I met him at the Long Branch today. We got to talking, and fool that I am, I, I told him about this. Are you trying to tell me that Grant Lucas came over here to rob you? I was in bed, the light was out, and, and he smashed the window. He didn't think anybody was here. I see. What are you going to do to me, Marshal? Nothing, I guess. I can't very well arrest a woman for defending her property. Then you do believe me. Well, is there any reason why I shouldn't? No, Marshal. No, there isn't. Radio Free Europe is the effective truth weapon of the free world. It is effective where other means of communication fail. Radio Free Europe gets its broadcast through the Iron Curtain and keeps captive peoples informed about events around the globe. Without these broadcasts, the captive peoples would become easy propaganda victims of the communists. They could then become ready tools in the communist drive to undermine freedom where it continues to exist. Radio Free Europe is a privately supported institution. It depends for its continued operations on the enlightened generosity of free peoples, chiefly in the United States. You are asked for your support and your truth dollars. To continue this vital program, send what you can to the Radio Free Europe Fund, Box 1961, Mount Vernon 10, New York. <laughs> Oh, 
Ah, Chester. Oh, hello there, Doc. What are you doing here at the stable? Robbing the place? No, I ain't robbing the place. I come over to have a little game of cards with Moss Grimmy. Oh, yeah, same thing. Where's Moss, anyway? Well, I guess he must have went out somewhere. Uh, it's too bad. I wanted him to take the buggy. The road man can't even unhitch his own buggy. You ought to get yourself a coachman, Doc. Yeah, I, I just got one. What? You. Come on, come on. Well, I guess somebody's got to help a poor, busted-down old sawbones who don't know nothing. Come on, let's go. You just hold his head, Doc. I'll do the work. You know, these lines could sure stand a little saddle soap, Doc. Uh, just a... Hmm? Isn't that Cy Welch? Poor. Mm. Yeah. Huh. Wonder what he's doing in town. Yeah. Up to no good, more than likely. Oh, hello there, Doc. Chester, how are you? Yeah, I was fine up till now. They're coming to town today and haven't seen the marshal around. He rode out to Grant Lucas's place. Won't be back till real late. Oh, tonight. yeah, yeah, I heard about Grant. That's too bad. Some girl did it, huh? Sloan gal, or at the Long Branch. Hmm. Downright shame for a man to go like that, leaving a bad name behind him. Well, that's a fine thing for you to be saying, Cy Welch. What do you mean, Doc? You couldn't care less about his death or his reputation oh, or anything else. All right, all right. I didn't like the man. He was going to go into court in a couple of days and lie about me, wasn't he? Then he brought all this trouble on me in the first place. Now, that doesn't mean I can't feel bad about the way he died. I'd feel bad about any man, even if he wasn't. You're was glad beast. he's dead, and you know it. Well, how would it make any difference to me? Hmm? Marshal Dillon's still testifying against me, isn't he? One less witness doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, but don't think I'm not going to win that case anyway. I'll make the marshal look like a fool. Oh, well, you seem awful sure of yourself. Doc, I'd be in California by now if I wasn't sure. Yeah, but you're the kind who'd run out all right. Yeah. <laughs> I've been called a lot of things, maybe, but never a fool. I'll see you at the trial. Well, that's one fellow I sure would hate to claim as a friend. Or as an enemy, Chester. Barkeep, bring me a beer. Yes, sir. Want some company, mister? I've got my own beer. No, thanks. I like to drink alone. All right, then. Drink alone. I know you're kind, mister. Fancy clothes and empty pockets. You just leave me alone, will you? Oh, I sure will, yeah. All right with you if I stand at the same bar? You can stand anywhere you like. Thanks. I'm fine right here. Here you are. Thanks. The new girl you've got's real anxious. Huh? Oh, don't get edgy, mister. May just being friendly. She don't mean no harm. Oh, yeah. Oh. May. Yeah. There's only two days left. I know that. Now, don't turn around to me. Now, what about the marshal? He's like a cat. I don't think anybody could shoot him even in the back. Don't let that badge fool you. He's just a man. You could have shot him by now and got away easy. Nobody suspect a woman. He already suspects me. What? Grant Lucas. I know he does. I should have hired a man for this job. Go ahead and hire one, but you pay me first. I pay you nothing if you don't finish it. You, you try that and I'll talk. Well, and hang yourself? It might be worth it to have you hang with me. Hey, you listen to me, May. You get that, Marshal. You get him tonight, one way or another. Or so help me, I'll carve you up so no man will ever look at you again. <laughs> I bet you will. I mean it, May. All right, I'll get him. Quit worrying about it. I'll quit worrying after he's dead. You just have the money ready. Tomorrow. 
that you, Marshal? Oh, hello, Moss. I've been waiting for you. Oh, you needn't have. I can put the horse up. No, no, I'll take him. You had a long enough day. <sighs> You're right about that. Yeah. You get things took care of, did you? I did what I could. Grant Lucas, he's a good man. He must have been drunk or something. Yeah. Well, I've got to go to bed, Moss. Good night. Good night for sleeping. Huh? How's that? There's no moon. I can't remember a night as black as this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, good night. Good night, Marshal. All right, who's there? No, no, don't shoot. It's it, 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 it me, Marshal, Meg Helmy. Meg? What are you doing back there in the alley? Uh, I, I, I didn't know it was you. I, I, I was afraid. I, I was trying to hide. I almost shot you. Well, I was... I was trying to get to my room. I, I, got, I got lost. Too many drinks, I guess. You alone? Of course I'm alone. I, I simply got lost, I tell you. Don't you believe me? Sure I believe you, ma'am. You want to tell me the truth? I might even believe that. I, I am telling the truth. I got lost. Oh, Marshal, that, that that awful business last night. I, I haven't been myself today. I, I haven't been able to think or anything. I can't get it out of my mind. All right, May, come on. I'll see you to your room. Hello, Doc. Yeah, Matt. How'd it go? Well, everything's taken care of. Grant has some relatives back east. Tomorrow I'll have Mr. Botkin contact them and settle the estate. Um, uh, sure is a waste when a man like Grant Lucas has to go. Yeah, what are you doing up so late? Oh, I thought I'd stop by and have a cup of coffee with Chester before I turned in. It's a dead town tonight, Matt. There weren't more than six men over at the Long Branch. They were just closing up when they left. Well, I guess that's why May Tommy left early. No, she wasn't there. Yeah, I know. I ran into her on the way from the stable. I took her to her room. What? Yeah, she said she was lost. I think maybe she had a little too much to drink. Mm. Uh, Miss Dillon, that cussed Cy Welch was in town today. Well, yeah, that's good. Trial's day after tomorrow, you know. If you ask me, the law's been a long time catching up with that man. It's only been a few months, Doc. Oh, I don't mean just this business here. I, I mean from years back. Years back? When I first ran into him, I, he wasn't any good then, either. Why, right, Doc, you didn't ever tell us you knew Cy Welch before. Oh, I, I just knew him in passing. He, he never was the kind of a crook that I have any admiration for. Well, where was this that you knew him? Doc? On the river. There were a thousand just like him. The river? You mean the Mississippi? The, the Mississippi. Now, what other river would I be talking about? Mr. Dillon, what's bothering you? May tell me. Well, what about it? Well, Kitty told me that she used to work the riverboats. That's right, she did, but I think I remember now. She used to. Well, uh, that's mighty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, Doc, it sure is. Chester? Yes, sir. Put on your hat. We're going to call on a lady. <laughs> shouldn't be here. Suppose you're going to tell me you've got the marshal coming here, huh? Going to try to pull the same trick on him you did on that Grand Lucas? Of course not. Well, then what are you going to do? When are you going to get rid of the marshal, May? Why don't you leave me alone? Oh, I'll leave you alone, all right. Give you a thousand dollars just like I promised, and then I'll leave you alone for good and all. But first, you've got to finish your job. All right, all right, all right. No, it's not all right, all right. You leave me alone. I think you're alone. scared. Now, you hear? I think you're so scared that, Marshal, you're not going to do a thing. No. That's right, isn't it? No, no, it isn't. You stop lying to me. Whoosh, <laughs> <gasps> rotten beast. Well, I will tell him. I'll tell him everything. Oh, you know, I don't you... care. Let him get me, but they'll get you, too. Oh, they're not going to get me. <laughs> Why, you... What are you doing? Oh, to 
show you what I'm doing. Oh, no. (laughs) Go ahead. You were going to shoot me. You were going to kill me. A woman like you. (laughs) Kill me. Hey, are you in there? Like a marshal? Come in, marshal. Come in. I'm going to have to kill you now, mate. All right, hold it, sir. Oh, no, marshal. Now, will I? Will I? Is he dead? Yeah. My goodness, what a time to worry about getting paid. Yeah, she got paid all right, Chester. She got paid good. I just wonder if the job was worth it. Have you ever heard anyone say, perhaps you've said it yourself, I was so worried I couldn't think straight. This doesn't mean we are ill... Although psychiatrists point out that milder forms of mental illness affect most of us from time to time. What prompts this behavior in others that we find offensive may stem from illness rather than malice or character flaws. As it has been said, sometimes troublesome people are people in trouble. If you'd like to learn more about how emotions can be diverted from mental problems, the address is Box 3000, New York 1. Gunsmoke, produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted for radio by Frank Perrin. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, and John Daner. Harvey Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke. The laughs are on Arthur Godfrey, weekdays on the CBS Radio Network.